It's something that you think since you are little. You think, oh, when I grow up, I want to be a scientist. You know that you follow your dreams and you get that title and it's very fulfilling. So this works like if it were a human lab at a hospital, like when you get sick and the doctor needs to know what's going on with you, they get a blood sample, a urine sample, a fecal sample, and send it to the lab. My name is Dr. Rebecca Rivera, and I have a PhD in comparative pathology, and my job is to look for viruses that may affect dolphins and sea lions. In this lab particularly, we work at the molecular level, meaning that we look for the DNA or the RNA that is in that viruses. I love the thrill of the discovery. It's pretty much like solving a crime. You know that there's a virus there and you have to figure out how you're gonna find it and how you're gonna prove that that's the virus causing the disease. What we do is that we extract the DNA from that sample. Say we get a blood sample. If the DNA of the virus is present, genome copies will be made with some machines that we have in the lab. So in order to make copies of the DNA, as you know, the DNA is a double-stranded molecule. When you increase the temperature on that double-stranded mo molecule, the strands separate. And the ingredients that we put in can bind to one of the strands of the genome and make copies. The techniques that we are using in the lab are actually techniques that all of us learn during high school or college years. You can use the same technique over and over to determine the same thing in different experiments. So if you learn a technique well, you can apply it in different settings on your career. Salaries can range from 35 to $45,000 when you're starting your career, and that's called a postdoctoral level because you're still learning what you're gonna do. And then as you earn experience and you move on, you can get up to $100,000 a year. The salary that you'll get on this type of work varies a lot. It depends on if you're going to follow in academia, meaning being a professor and have a laboratory in a university setting. You can also choose uh, to work in an industry, private biotechnology companies, which actually has a lot of income. Or you can work in a small setting, like this one. I work for a nonprofit organization. There's goods and bads of both. You can work for academia and industry, which actually give you the high-end salaries, but you sacrifice a little bit of the quality of life, the flexibility, the freedom. I do hobbies like salsa dancing. I'm an avid biker. I like hiking, camping, so I make sure that I have a balanced life. There's people every day all over the world trying to understand what's happening to us and every other organisms at the molecular level. So it's a field that is expanding and I can see that in the next few years it's going to be a very stable job. We make sure that not only we're doing this cutting edge science in order to get funding and get publications, but that we're actually doing something that is good for the world, good for the marine mammals and good for the wild. Do something that you're passionate about. Because if, if, if you're passionate about it, you're going to be good at it. You, you cannot choose your career based on the salary or the status because most likely you're not going to succeed at it because you're not going to have that innate drive. So it's very important that when you're choosing a career, you choose a career that you're absolutely passionate about. And if you're passionate about it, you'll be successful at it.